I think we're in. We're on. Very Hello. cool. Hello. I brought Nairi in this time. Like I couldn't find her the other day. I couldn't tag her in. So I've actually managed to track her down. And we're sitting in the lobby of the Bank of Queensland. Thank you, Bank of Queensland, for giving us your lobby for the day. Of all the places of to find a places. quiet spot. <laughs> it's very quiet in the banks because no one's going into the banks these days. They're all going into the crypto area. So I want to say I've been trading in the stock market for probably more than 25 years been financial planning since back in 1991, 1992 and back in the day when we used to go through brokers and things like that before they, the banks had their online broking, you used to pay a fortune, you used to have to call the stockbroker and with the invention of the internet obviously uh, stock market trading has become easier so you could buy through Comsec or, or Westpac or these kind of guys for $25. And that's great. You'd have to buy a parcel of a minimum of $500 worth of shares. You paid $25 of brokerage. So you've lost 5% before you start. And then when you want to sell these shares, it's going to cost you $25 again to get your money back. So there's a 10% differential there already on your $500. You have to make sure your shares have gone up by at least 20% before you'd actually make a gain. With crypto, you can get in for a few cents, depending on which exchange you get into. You might have to pay... You might have to pay $10 to turn your dollars into, say, Bitcoin. But then once you're in there, you can turn your Bitcoin into Ethereum. It might cost you 10 or 12 cents. You can turn your Ethereum into Litecoin. It might cost you 16 cents to do that. Mm. That's a lot easier to move around. And also the speed. We're actually up to number two now. Um, the speed is very quick. So if you bought Qantas shares, they have a thing called T plus three. So the money goes out of your account on day one. Three days later, you'll actually get confirmed that you've got those Qantas shares. Then if you want to sell those Qantas shares to buy BHP shares, it's going to take three days for the money to come back to your account. It's yes, almost, almost as if the banks are using the post office to send, to send checks or something like that. There's three days in, three days out, and then another three days before you get your next shares. Yeah, well, the banks are making money on your money while you're waiting for your money. And here we're trading immediately and getting the return and massive profits. Yeah. And now, I've, I've dropped money from Bitcoin into an exchange, turned it into Ethereum, turned it into something else, and then been able to buy other things with that. And even sending money to friends and relatives overseas very, very quickly. Yeah, and being able to jump in from different exchanges too, because it, you know, it's a one coin could be you know twenty percent different on another exchange, and you can immediately jump over and sell it, and then bring it back. So I mean, jumping from exchanges too, you can make immediate mm. um, you know, cash flow, and it's fun. It's like a game. That was the arbitrage that we were talking about. If you haven't seen the previous video that I did yesterday, how you can buy a Bitcoin for 22000 on one exchange, flip it across to another exchange and sell it for 24000 because those guys haven't realised that the price has moved yet. So that's one of the interesting things, uh, this is number four now, uh, with, with the crypto market is it's unregulated. So the stock exchanges are all regulated, they're all linked together and they all know what prices are supposed to be what. It's more difficult to make money in the stock market. Yeah. Uh, with crypto, it's unregulated. It's basically the, the wild, wild west. There's nobody in charge. There's no banks or life insurance companies in charge of this. Bootlegging. Um, it's kind Almost. of like bootlegging without borders, and nobody knows where the money is coming from, where it's going to. Hey, Maddie. Um, and no one's in control of it. So if you can see an advantage that you can have, you just take that advantage. Mm. Now, we were talking about this earlier this morning over breakfast, saying that with the regulations in the stock market, if Virgin shares went up 15%, then they would actually, the stock market would stop trading those Virgin shares. If they couldn't see why the shares went up by 15 or 20%, and stop trading them, no one can get in, no one can get out, and then Virgin has to explain to the stock exchange why their shares went up or down. If they're having a new announcement, the company has to actually advise the stock exchange, we expect our shares are gonna go up or down based on a plane crash or a new product or whatever. So this one, nobody can stop it. It's unregulated, it's unstoppable. So if a coin goes up by a thousand percent or thirteen hundred percent, like what happened the other day with Verge, no one can stop that. Yeah, and it's but it's also such a volatile market too. You don't know how quickly it's going to go up. You don't know how quickly it's going to crash. So you've got to have a non-attachment approach to any of this, where you've got to decide. But if you've doubled and you're happy with that then to sell out and it might double again but you've got to just walk away because you know and, and play that game and know that you're better off to take and not be greedy and you know set that sell order and walk away mm, mm, absolutely. so we have a non-attachment fun cruisy approach to this 
Uh, in, in my first book that I wrote about stock market trading uh, back in when was that, 2005, 2006, I was talking about how to get free shares. Um, who's taking your money? Um, how to get free shares, because if you think that something's going to go up by 10, 15, 20%, you can drop $1,000 in there, and if it goes up by 30%, okay, now you've got $1,300, you pull your original $1,000 back out. Okay, there's my money, you can go and buy some other shares with that, or you can shop with it, you can do whatever you like with your $1,000, leave your $300 in there. You didn't have to pay anything for it, it's yours for free, just leave it there. It might sit there for 10 years, it might sit there for three years, who knows, but it's yours, you got it for nothing. So you can do the same thing with your crypto. Um, you can actually jump in there and sometimes these things will move thousands of percent within a couple of hours. You can take your original cash back out. For people who are afraid of losing their money, absolutely, this is a great idea. And you know, if, if you've doubled your money in Bitcoin, you take your original money back out and you let the other one fly, who cares if it goes up to 25,000, up to 32,000, back down to 16,000, it doesn't matter. It's a cost you nothing, you can afford to let it sit there for the next five years and see how this whole game plays out. That's called hold. Holding, hold. absolutely, holding, but getting free oh, yeah. currency as like as opposed to getting free shares. It's a very good, very good tactic. Um, we're up to about number six, I think now. Um, the stock exchanges and the, the life insurance companies and the, the actual companies, the, the trading companies, are the ones who are regulating and running the stock market. Obviously, they've got a vested interest. When you buy shares on the stock exchange and they charge you $25 for brokerage, it's actually costing them a couple of cents. So they're making a massive profit, which is why the banks make billion dollar profits every few months. This way, it's only costing you a few cents. It's being run by the people. Obviously, with Bitcoin, there's people out there running their mining rigs and running their computers. They're being paid to process these transactions. With a couple of the other coins using the Tangle rather than the blockchain, it's actually us. We're yeah. processing other people's transactions to help our own transactions go through. So if I want to send money to friends and relatives in Africa or Indonesia or whatever, I can do that absolutely for free. It doesn't even cost one cent. But in it's order for me to really process... It's in the bank. We're sitting in a bank. It's hilarious because people are coming in and out and watching us and thinking, yeah. what are they talking a crowd about? around the bank. <laughs> um, for me to process the transaction to send money to my staff in Indonesia, I first have to process your transaction. I have to process two transactions for someone else before my transaction will be processed. Obviously, I'm going to do that because I want my transaction to get processed. So it's just a couple of extra seconds of time mm -hmm. and computing power on my phone to help it go through. So the banks charging 50, 60, 100 dollars for, for cash transfers is not gonna happen anymore. This is really the people's money, it's peer-to-peer -peer technology, and it's gonna create new industries, it's gonna destroy other industries. Think of what the internet did to the post office. In the olden days, you'd walk into the post office with a bunch of parcels, you'd come out with nothing but a receipt. Now you walk into the post office and there's just retail goods for sale in there. You'd, toys and teddy bears and stuff like that. The post office had to change how they make their money because they can't afford to pay their rent on their buildings if they're just mailing things because we don't send letters anymore, we go in there and buy crap. Okay, the bank's not running it. The fees, as we said before, the fees are much, much lower. Barrier to entry might be a few dollars rather than a minimum of $25 or a minimum of $500 with the shares. And for those of you with kids out there, this um, is amazing. As far as I'm aware, as far as I'm aware, and I don't know, as far as I'm aware, there's no age limits on this. Well, one. there was a 12 year old kid who said to his parents, if I have a million dollars by the time I am due to go to college, can I not go to college? And they said yes. He bought one Bitcoin for like back when it originally started. Yeah, he had his birthday money from his grandma. So yeah. I think he, he bought like $500 worth or something like Let's that. Let's find that information yeah, yeah, and yeah. post it because yeah. that's like, you know, this is we'll how these that. things happen. And this kid, so he wasn't just a millionaire by the time. <laughs> he didn't go to college. He didn't need to. He, he's probably a billionaire by now. And this is, you know, some of these... Um, he's a trillionaire. Yeah, but then people are looking and investing into... Um, Bitcoin because that's all they know. There's over 800 different coins. 1,300 13. and counting. <laughs> well, that can work. It goes up quickly. It goes very quickly. So, yeah. you know, some of these coins won't ever make it and they will flop and they will drop. And there will be other coins like Bitcoin which are going to, um, um, that might surpass Bitcoin. And if you've got a little bit of money on something like that, your $100 in five years' time could be worth $100,000. Mm -hmm. This is where, you know, that it's just looking at what the technology is and if you believe in the technology and it's something that's needed it will happen so for example litecoin 
when you look at from the time it started to where it's at now on the percentages of what that is it's already surpassed Bitcoin although the price of uh, per oh. Litecoin is obviously nowhere near Bitcoin so these are the things that you need to be looking at when you are investing and you're gonna hold long term uh, put some money in and just hold it for that five or ten years time and with your children this is where you're going to actually be looking at great investments for them on that. So I've invested a couple of coins for my kids that they'll get when they're 18 and who knows where it'll be. There's, there's a few things that I, I sort of have the assumption that if it's not illegal, then it's legal. Um, many years ago, my kids were in primary school and they said it's not... It's not recommended to have superannuation for kids. Um, and I said, is there a law against it? And they said, oh, well, there's some companies that won't open a superannuation account for kids until they're over 18. And but there was no law against it. They just said it wasn't recommended. It wasn't actually, technically it wasn't illegal, so therefore I thought it was legal. I started superannuation funds for my kids when they were like four, five, six years old. Um, and so obviously they've had a lot more time for that money to compound. But again, looking at investments, and this is an important thing, don't just look at, you know, Bitcoin's gone up 2,400% and Litecoin's gone up 4,000%. Look at the fundamental value underneath it. If you're gonna hold something for the long term, it. what's the tech behind it? What's the tangle? What's the blockchain? What does it do to the banking industry? You know, something that's gonna be a lot cheaper than, than transferring money through banks, obviously, obviously Bitcoin. And people are complaining now that it's taking two hours to transfer money through Bitcoin. Whereas we used to be able to wait three days or five days for money transfers. Now we're we getting impatient. <laughs> we want it done. Oh, it's got to, got, to, got to go instantly. Well, it's taking two hours. It's still sending an email might take 30 minutes if you're on a slow connection and if you're sending a really big data file to someone. It might take 30 minutes, but in the olden days, it used to take a week or so. So look for the underlying value. What does this coin do? What does the technology behind it do? How does it disrupt an industry? How does it change things? Yeah, shares in Uber and shares in Amazon have gone up mm. thousands and thousands of percent. Yeah. How's it going to but better? But what's it do? Yeah. You know, how, how does it actually add value to us in the long term? So age limits, also country limits. So mm. this, one, this one is interesting because you do need to get verified before you have your bank account linked yeah. to it and, and take money out. But I've found a few exchanges where they just don't care. They're happy to take my money it's just harder for me to get it out. And that's okay, because I, I want them to assume that I could be a terrorist or I could be a drug runner or something like that. But take my money now. Like, I want to give you $10,000 right now on my credit card. Take my money, please, now, so I can buy stuff. Later on, when I want to pull it out, no oh, money, it's paper money, it's worthless. Um, when, I want, when I want to pull it's the money the out, is, what it was is when you should actually check that my bank account is a real live person in my name. But that might be three, four days later. Some of these exchanges are making you wait 14 days while they verify you. And I don't want to wait 14 days because I've got a hot tip I want to buy today. So look for the exchanges where you can actually jump in. Uh, some tricky ways that I've got around it is I've actually mm. used Coinbase or CoinSpot which will verify me very quickly. I take a, a picture of my passport or my driver's license on my mobile phone. They'll verify you within a couple of hours and then I can buy the Bitcoin on there. I can transfer the Bitcoin from CoinSpot or Coinbase across to BTC Markets or Bittrex or whatever mm. one of these other ones because they'll accept the, current, the, the cryptocurrency coming in. I'm not, I still haven't linked it to my bank account, but I can get on there and from those bigger exchanges I can trade the 1300 coins, 1600 coins, whereas the smaller exchanges will only let you trade four or five coins. I don't particularly want those ones, but I'll buy Litecoin or I'll buy Bitcoin so that I can transfer it across to another exchange and then I can buy Power or Ether or mm. Verge or whatever those other ones are. Okay. So many. Um, are we, have we done nine yet? I think so. I think we've yeah, done nine. Yeah. I've got something written down in my notes about ubiquity and merchant promo. I can't even remember what I was going to talk about. <laughs> but I think we've covered um, it up. Oh, that's right. The merchant promo, because pe this is how people can actually use the coins as well. People are starting to issue their own coins. So it's not just Bitcoin saying we want to topple the banks. Um, it's not just Amazon saying we want to topple the bookstores or Uber saying we want to tap, topple the taxi industry. Uh, there's people who are releasing their own coins and again, this has a, a currency value. I've been messing around with paying people on Facebook to share my posts rather than paying Facebook to share yeah, my posts. Yes. So I'm going peer to peer and rewarding the people who are supporting me rather than rewarding the, the company in the middle. Now there's, there's some people out there which are starting their own vanity coins so you can have like a Kanye coin or a Taylor Swift coin or something like that. 
Now, when you share Taylor's posts on Instagram, when you buy her album, when you promote her a new tour, she will actually give you a few Taylor coins. And then you can use Taylor those coins. coins to buy her t-shirts and buy her records and that sort of stuff. Which, again, she's actually avoiding the bank transactions because if I wanted to buy someone's album or someone's yeah. t-shirt or a concert ticket, Stay. they've got to pay the 2.5% merchant facility. So if you're in business and you're paying you know, 1.5%, 2.5% to receive money from people, plus you're paying a monthly account keeping fee, plus, 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 this is a way of you receiving money instantly and quickly with, without all the fees. Without all the fees. Sometimes it's a couple of cents, sometimes it's absolutely free, depending on, on which underlying technology you're using. And again, I'm going to emphasize it one more time, look for the underlying technology, not just the light, the, the pretty name of the coin. And, and always, look yeah, look at, don't trust in what anybody else is telling you. Always go and look at yourself and read the white paper, look at the technology, see if it's something that's needed, see if that you believe in it, and then invest in it. Because you need to know what you're investing in. Like, you know, if you're going to buy a house, you want to know what you're buying. <laughs> and there's, there's some people out there who are the traders and they just see, you know, XRV has gone up 400%, so I'm going to buy it. And PGA has gone down 20%, so I'm going to sell it. And they don't actually know what's behind that. No, this is what I'm talking about, quantitative data, which is just the numbers, or qualitative data, which is what's behind the numbers. You know, why have the shares gone down? Um, have shares in ice cream gone down because it's winter? You know, have shares in Coca-Cola gone up because it's summer? Looking behind those things. So this is stuff that I, I covered in my book again years ago when talking about stock markets, because people would trade the stock markets without even knowing what the companies are and what they do. And that's okay, there's nothing wrong with that. But if you want to jump in and hold, then you've got to find out the underlying technology is going to be there. Of course, they're going to sell less ice cream in winter, good time to buy the ice cream shares, and then hold them because in summertime, obviously, when they make their profit. A lot of these coins, again, a lot of these technologies will disappear. So this is the dot-com boom all over again. We're going to see you know, Amazon came out on top, Google came out on top, Facebook came out on top, MySpace disappeared, Yahoo virtually disappeared, a few of these other little players disappeared. But if you're spread out amongst 10 or maybe even 15 of these design, different yeah. companies, then you've got a lot more security. So if you've made a thousand percent on one coin and eight of your other coins have disappeared and gone <laughs> broke, that's okay, you still come out on top. Uh, diversification is key, and again, one of the good things about it is you can buy in for smaller amounts, you're paying less fees, there's no minimums. As far as I'm aware, I've bought like $100 mm. worth of one coin, and I've bought like $6 worth of another coin, just for fun, you know, see what happens, and also to transfer it to other people, so I can gift them coins and get them into the market, if I think that's a technology that they're interested in. Because there's, there's a lot of people who are using the blockchain technology and the Tangle technology to disrupt a whole bunch of industries. So the rental industry, you know, Airbnb is so fast, you can get approved for a property and, and you know, you can pay your deposit and you can jump into someone else's house. But going to rent a house for 12 months, you've got to go through all this paperwork and this old technology. And they're doing background checks and you've got to give them a check and they put it into an escrow account, that sort of stuff. So Rentberry is one that I bought into yesterday because they're actually using the blockchain technology to, be, to basically do what Airbnb did to the motel industry and do that to the rental industry. So you can actually rent a place direct from the landlord without going through all these checks, without going through all this stuff because the person can see your social media profile, they can see your reviews, they can back check your driver's license instantly to see whether you're a decent person. And obviously they've got insurance in case you crash the house anyway. So it shouldn't be so hard, it shouldn't take you two weeks to get into a property. Look for the underlying technology, look for how it's going to disrupt industries. Obviously a lot of banks, smaller and banks are going to go out of business. More than you can afford, you know, that you're willing to lose. That's important. You know, like that's really important that you can put in what you're willing to lose, then you double that, then you take out and then you're stuck with what you're originally started with, then you can keep going. Yeah. Isn't it? So um, you know you're not going a lot of people want to just, you know, make quick, 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 quick money and you can, yeah. but you've also got to be diligent in yeah, you know, what you're willing to be responsible for your actions in this and and you know have a little bit of a um, sense of awareness of, of what you're doing and 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 do your own research. Absolutely do your own research because it's too easy to get caught up in what everybody else is doing and you need to trust and understand what you're doing as well.
Get educated. Uh, if, if you've got five kids and you've got 500 bucks, you stick 100 bucks in each kid's account. And like me. Again, you can, you can jump into something and if it doubles, pull back that original cash, mm. you know, and either either put it back into your wallet where you think it's secure because it's, because it's paper money, um, <laughs> or put it into something yeah. else. And then if, if you pull it out and you put it into cash or if you, you, know, you go and spend it, understand that the money that you left in there didn't cost you anything. You didn't pay anything for that. Again, you've got free Bitcoin, you've got free currency, you've got free crypto, and you can trade that around or you can just leave it sit. Mm. And it doesn't matter. You know, if you lose that, it doesn't matter. But again, diversifying across a few means that some of them are going to go well, some of them are not going to go well. Everybody wishes they'd invested in Apple back in 1982 or in Microsoft back in 1983. Yeah, and it's not too late. People everybody wishes they'd done late, that stuff. Don't they? Now not. they're household names. It's easy for me to say that. But if I had to said Microsoft to you back in 1982, you would have thought it was the cure for Viagra or something like that. You didn't know what Microsoft <laughs> meant, so you didn't invest into it. And we've all had that thing where I wish I had of. But this is a, a really big opportunity for you where you can get into 20 different coins. Mm. You only pay a few cents for, for the exchange rates. Some of them have very, very small minimums. So it's a lot easier to get into this. It's a lot easier to get out of it than it was in, in the stock exchange. It's open mm. all night. You can be trading at 3 a.m. if you want to, whereas the stock exchange, you know, usually yeah. 9 to 4 is open. Yeah, but if you hold, you're not going to lose either. So, yeah. I mean, you, you, you need to have that strategy of holding and also, you know, trading. But if you don't want to trade and you just invest and hold, you're not going to lose. Look at Tara saying how much she loves you and you haven't even paid her to say I that. Know. I've, I've been paying Tara the last few days because Tara's been supporting me and, and tagging people and sharing my video, Hell Western Crooked. So it's, it's yeah. increased my video views by probably about a thousand percent. So thank you, Tara. And she's picked up some Bitcoin and she's saying she likes Fantastic. you too. Fantastic. Um, yeah. Unpaid solicitor. <laughs> he bought me coffee. Yeah, true. I didn't get Bitcoin. <laughs> got coffee but it's being able to allow um, you know to have the education and there is free education out there and you, you know um, we'll share the link so you people can get informed and make these conscious decisions for themselves in order to be able to decide you know it's your choice it's your life your decision and we're just here to help educate you to keep you out of the Ponzi schemes yeah, stay away from the Ponzi schemes. We don't recommend any multi-level marketing schemes or anything like that because it can be too difficult to control what you're doing, how you're doing it, and you don't even know where your money is at some of the times if you're being paid to bring more people in and you're not actually making profits off mm. the coin or if you can't verify the mining because they should give you their key. If they say they're mining and they're paying out commissions, they can give you your key. You can check it on the blockchain to see whether they're actually doing what they're doing. It's almost anonymous um, being on the, on the blockchain, but once you've got someone's key, you can watch their transactions and see whether they're really paying out these commissions and things that they're saying. Yeah, I mean, you know? and then if you're going to, um, you know, if you're going to be really realistic about this, um, you know, we've had coins that we've gone like 300% up, 1,000% up in a day. So like in the last two weeks, you know, I've tripled my investment and you wouldn't get that in some company offering you 1% compounding interest over the 140 days or however they work. I'm not interested because I like to have control of what I'm doing, choose the coins that I want to be in, uh, you know, love the technology behind it, love what they're doing to make that change out in the world. And the beautiful thing about this kind of currency is that we're having abundance spread universally all across the world where, you know, the, any, any person, any average person has the ability to have this beautiful abundance and be the change in the world and make the changes that they wish to have across the world as well. Mm. I just love my miraculous wallet. Like, you know, I put a couple of thousand dollars in Bitcoin and go, oh, look, it's just turned into $5,000. So I can actually give, you know, $1,000 to Tara and I can give $500 to this yeah. guy. And give, you know, I can give $5 to Tara's brother just so he's in the market and, and someone else. And there's still plenty left over. Now, I couldn't do that with the, with the stock market. I couldn't give you one share in BHP. I couldn't give you one share in Qantas. And if I tried to, it would cost me $25 for brokerage. So I'm, I'm going to wind up because we've gone all like, like yeah. 30 so, minutes on this Facebook yeah, Live. Yeah, Tara, we, um, you put in a sell order for where you want to sell it. And then you know, once it sells, then yes, you can take that money back out. But what we do then is use the money that we have made, so just say a 
you know, made thousand dollars, then we will use take that thousand dollars and reinvest, um, you know, over another couple of coins, and then we sit and hold on those. So if when you watch the end of the yeah. news, it always says at the end of the news in that boring bit when you go and make a cup of tea, like the US dollar is up three cents and Australian dollar is down and Japanese yen is up like this. So imagine if you've got multiple currencies, so we're holding US dollars here at the moment, we could have Australian dollars, we could have Venezuelan lychees or whatever they use in coconut land, I'm not sure. Um, there's a lot of currencies that you could be holding, some are going up, some are going down, but you can easily swap in between the currencies without actually having to take them out manually like from an ATM. So we'll wind up, we'll put in the link there for Krillionaire.com. There is a lot of free training. There's a free book. It's a 164 page book written by a guy who's been in crypto for more than five years. He's a, he's a friend of mine going to his Christmas party tonight actually. Hi Jamie. Um, and there's, as I say, there's a lot, lot of free information. There is some paid training courses in there. If you do the paid training courses up until Christmas or New Year, I'm not sure, you'll need to check yeah, on the you website. Get the you actually back. get the same back. So if you in pay $495 for the paid training course, if you want more information than the free courses, you will actually get $495 worth of cryptocurrency. And this is one that's actually backed by real estate. So as I said before, some of these ones will disappear, like the you know MySpace mm. disappeared. But if they've got an asset backing or if they've got good technology, then at least you're guaranteed you're gonna get something back. So yeah. we'll finish up now. We've been going for 30 minutes. We will be doing some more lives and we'll figure out the technology so we can do this from different lounge rooms rather than having to um, squat in the bank. And um, it's cool here. hope to see you all soon. You can contact me again if you share these videos. I'm paying you directly rather than paying for Facebook ads. And share the website, share the love, and we'll chat to you soon. Thanks, Justine. Merry Christmas Thanks and to everybody Bitcoin else. Talk to you soon. Cryptocurrency. You're paying. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha